food storage, where did it come from? What does it mean? What did they do back, let's say in the 18th century? What are some of the things that they did to preserve their foods? How did they do that? A lot of things that they've done in history still be done today. A lot of things that took place in history are still taking place. A lot of people still live by certain standards that have happened in history. What have we learned from history? Well, we know that back in the 18th century, you know, they had to preserve their harvest. When they harvest in the fall, they had to put away their food. Whatever they harvest, for the long cold winters that were becoming rolling around the corner and they knew that they had to be prepared. The word prepared didn't come out into the Webster dictionary until 1904. So what were the people back in the 18th century? What did they call it? Because they knew that in the end, they would not be harvesting any crops. They wouldn't have any fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. They wouldn't have any of those type of things in the ground that they could go out and just harvest on a moment's notice for a meal for that day. So they had to figure out ways to succeed in making sure that the storage was there. They had to figure out what to do, how to store their products and how to make them last to get them through that four to six months winter, depending on wherever these pilgrims did live in this great country of ours. Now, a lot of things have changed. You know, back in the 18th century, they put away all their food and they put away everything so that they could survive through the winter time until they could get to the spring when maybe some things were coming available. They could start planting certain types of vegetables and then they would really get into hard, you know, their big planting season and, and getting everything in the ground because you know, you only have a short time depending on where you're at. The farther south you are, the longer period of time you have to grow. The farther north you are, the less time you have to grow. And all these farmers and pilgrims, all these different people, they knew their time frames. They knew how long they had and when they had to have this stuff in the ground. Unlike today, we're so used to, in today's society, of uh, picking up your phone and ordering food, have it delivered to you, ordering your groceries, have it delivered to you, ordering dinner, have it delivered to you, and everything else. People don't really put too much thought into being prepared. History teaches us that things go bad. There's been a lot of things go bad throughout history. The Great Depression, the wars, the Civil Wars, all these type of things, and certain generations well, they have learned on how to really deal with these and they were taught by their parents on how to be prepared to overcome and to survive all those different scenarios of bad things. So nowadays, would it be so bad if maybe most of the general public had maybe at least a one to two week supply of food? In case something happens they couldn't get to the store in case something happens that the prices go so high they can't afford it is it so bad to be ready that's the question you have to ask yourself is it so bad to actually take a little piece of history and put it into good use for today's society on the fact that well folks bad things do happen and you never know when those bad things are gonna happen. Nobody saw the Great Depression coming. I'm sure that morning before everything crashed, people got up, they were going to work. Maybe they stopped and got their coffee and a donut or something, or their favorite biscuit, or whatever it may be. They picked up their local newspaper from the newspaper boy, and they were headed on their merry way. Little did they know by the end of the day, their whole lives were going to be turned upside down and everything has changed. They no longer could probably afford that cup of coffee, probably not even the newspaper. You see, things can happen on a moment's notice. And if you're not prepared, it's not going to be a fun time for you and your family. Things of history 
learning experiences for all of us. We all learn something from all these things that have happened in history. Maybe people need to get back to the basics, ways of preserving your food, just like my grandparents did. And I'm sure a lot of you people out there watching this video right now, your grandparents did the same thing. They were canning, they were preserving, they were stocking up their pantries. And I think the generation that was probably best at that was the generation after the Great Depression. Because those people that lived through the Great Depression, especially the kids that lived through that Great Depression, they know what real hard times are. They know what having probably a slice of bread for dinner is like, unlike what probably 98% of Americans do nowadays. So with the looming inflation, with the shortages, with everything that's going on in this world, maybe it's time for us to take a little look back in history. Take a page from that book and apply it to your lives and your daily living on survival. You see, because every morning when you get up, it's a survival until you get back home. But things could get really tough. Things could be really bad. But you have control of the history to come. You can't change the future. You don't know the future and we can't change the past, but we know the past. You live in the present just like everybody else, but being prepared makes the present a lot better. Right now is a good time before this new year rolls around. Take a stockpile and see what you have and what you need because a lot of the prices, the inflation, are all going to be going up. All the analysts, all the CEOs of all the major companies have already announced prices on everything are going to skyrocket more than what they are already. Thank you for watching this video today. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And until next time, you all stay safe, thrive to survive, and as always, I'll catch all of you on the flip side.